Okay, so if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've probably seen some of the videos that I've posted kind of comparing the differences, pros and cons between a class three and below pickup truck, which is basically a pickup truck with a gross vehicle weight rating of 14,000 pounds or less, and your heavy duty haulers, your heavy duty trucks, basically your Peterbilts, your Kenworths, your Freightliners, you know, your Volvos, all of those really heavy duty semi-tractors that you typically see hauling, you know, big dry van containers or reefer containers down the highway for interstate commerce. And you know, there's actually been quite a move for folks who would normally have a truck like this to get into what's called an HDT, a heavy duty truck. And again, those heavy duty trucks being a semi-tractor. Now, for reference purpose and reference sake for the rest of this video, I'm just gonna refer to them as HDTs because that's what most people in the RV community would call them. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the, I guess, you know, the change in mindset I've had over the past several years, ever since putting out a couple of videos about this topic. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so most of you guys have probably seen my 2017 F450 King Ranch. I've had this thing since 2017. It's been an absolutely fantastic truck. You guys probably also know the main reasons why I like having an F450. That's super, super awesome front steering because it has that wide track front axle. Um, just, you know, those super beefy 19 and a half inch wheels and tires. Um, just a really, really great all around truck. It's kind of the best of an F350 with some of the features of a commercial truck all crammed into one. And it gives you just a nice package. Now, you know, some of the challenges I think that exist in today's RV world, the fact that RVs are getting heavier and heavier and heavier than ever before. There have always been really heavy fifth wheels and there's always been really heavy travel trailers. But what you're starting to see now are more of your larger toy haulers and even your luxury and ultra luxury brand RVs really getting up there in weights that have never really existed before in the past. And again, yes, there have always been brands that have been really, really heavy but you typically didn't see brands that were in the 26 to 35 to almost 40,000 pound range until now. And over the last, I'm gonna say four to five years, they've really gotten to be a popular option for folks who might normally spend a lot of money on a motorhome, perhaps more options in terms of having a towable unit because they can just get a really big, powerful truck to tow it. So what's the point of this video? The point of this video is the fact that, you know, if you're getting an RV that is, 20,000 pounds and below, then your F450s, your F350s are gonna be an option for towing them. When you start exceeding that 20,000 pound range and you start getting up to 24, 26, 30,000 pound range RVs, that's really where you should consider a larger truck than something that you might find at your you know, typical dealership. And that's really where the world of HDT trucks become you know, an option, something that you should consider. Now, some folks will say, even for you know, a 17,500 pound GVWR trailer, you should get an HDT truck. And I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true for a lot of reasons. Uh, the main reason is the fact that with the capabilities that you get on some of your newer dually trucks, whether it's a Ford, a GM, or Ram or whatever brand, they are performing better than they've ever performed. They have more power in terms of horsepower, torque, towing capabilities, payload than they've ever had in the past. I remember reading some articles where some automotive reviewers basically said, you know, a modern dually truck today has roughly twice to three times the towing capacity of a truck 10 to 15 years ago. That's not so much true anymore simply because I think that article was actually written in like 2011 when a lot of these newer trucks were first starting to come out with these crazy crazy numbers but all that said yeah you're seeing a lot more capability out of your class three and below market than you've ever seen in the past even half ton trucks are more capable than they've ever been in the past what is certainly something you have to keep in mind though is the limitation of a truck like this even though it's very unlikely that you would get a trailer that would exceed the towing capacity of a truck you're very likely to exceed the payload capacity and then of course when you get into these hdt's you start talking about really really crazy capacities that it's almost impossible for any type of recreational vehicle to exceed unless that recreational vehicle is built upon like a semi-trailer or a dry van type 
construction method where they've basically taken like a semi-trailer and they've converted it into an RV like brands like Spacecraft do. That being said though, you also have to consider that when you move to an HDT, you know, there's gonna be some pros, there's gonna be some cons. I think some folks who look at HDTs and become HDT fans just point out the pros. There are cons, and one of those is just the sheer size of the truck. Now, I know some people will say it's not that much bigger or that much longer than a truck like this, but one of the big differences is that you're talking about a truck that's over eight feet wide front to back, whereas a truck like this is certainly not that big. If I wanted to take my truck through you know, a drive-through, I can do that. I, I really can't do that with an HDT. If I wanna take my truck and park it in a parking lot at a grocery store, I can do that. Uh, you know, An HDT is just not really the type of truck that you would wanna do that. You'd be so close to all of the vehicles next to you because the fenders on the back of this truck are really the only part of the truck that extends extend out to eight feet. The rest of the truck fits in really well into those tight areas. And the second part of it is the fact that most of your semi trucks are gonna be a little over eight feet, whereas my truck's gonna be right around eight feet, except for the tow mirrors, which stick out a little bit further. Now, some other things to focus on are gonna be like your fuel tank sizes, where you can get fuel and things like that. But I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty. If you need an HDT truck, you typically are gonna get it because you have a trailer that would best be suited to work well with it. One of the reasons why it may not be the greatest idea for an HDT truck for your typical RV that's under 20,000 pounds is because the suspension on an HDT truck is not very plush. Yes, you have airbag options on a lot of them. Some of them still have traditional leaf spring, but they certainly don't have the type of movement that you're gonna get from your standard pickup truck. So even if you go that route on your heavier fifth wheels, you're typically gonna wanna put a very, very shock absorbing type pin box on your fifth wheel. Otherwise, just the, the road chatter, the, the, that bobtailing effect, basically, you know, the, the pin weight of your fifth wheel isn't gonna be anywhere near the type of pin weight that would traditionally rest on the back of a semi truck. And when that truck's moving down the road, it's transferring a lot more road vibration to the chassis of the RV, and it can cause issues. If you are towing an RV over the, the axle of a pickup truck, the suspension is significantly softer. And that softer suspension acts in part as a dampening effect and dampening some of that, that road vibration jitters and, and you know harshness of the road from the truck to the trailer. And if you have a suspension pin box on the front of your RV, it makes that even better, right? It, you really have the best possible dampening situation. Now, again, you are absolutely gonna have more towability in terms of a, an HDT truck. It's just, you know, you're talking about a truck that's designed to haul commercial containers. It's not really set up for anything but towing. And in many cases, you don't wanna drive them without something over the back to, to put weight down over the back axles. Otherwise, you can have some really, really weird braking situations and some really weird driving experiences simply because, again, those trucks work best when they're paired to a heavy trailer for towing. So I'm not knocking HDT trucks in this video, and I hope you guys realize that at this point, that if you have an RV that is heavy enough and large enough and you feel really requires an HDT truck or even a medium duty truck, you know, something like a, a sport chassis Freightliner or something along those lines, then that might be the right truck for you. I don't think you are in the wrong at all for exploring those as a legitimate option if you have a heavy enough trailer. But what I don't think is the right thing to do is simply look at maybe the size of your trailer and think that, oh, well, just because it's a 42 foot long fifth wheel, you know, it might have a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,000 pounds. And you're thinking, well, because of the overall size, it's gonna be better to haul it with an HDT truck. And the only thing I want you to think about at that point is some of the negatives as well. I, I you know, I don't really want anybody ever to look at a specific vehicle, whatever vehicle they're looking at, a half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, Ford, GM, Ram, Toyota, Nissan, you know, and just look at the positives or just look at the negatives. You really have to do your due diligence and look at the entire picture. How is getting a certain vehicle or a certain RV truly gonna impact how you wanna use it? How's it gonna fit in the places you wanna go? How are you gonna feel towing it? How is your tow vehicle gonna be handling it? How is your RV gonna impact your tow vehicle? So, you know, when I reapproach this topic about HDT trucks and I, I try to figure out the best way to give you all unbiased feedback, 
you know, the, the best way to do that is just to really say if you are considering it, absolutely consider it. Consider getting the type of truck that you think is best for the application, but then start looking at the pros and looking at the cons. If you only go into it trying to find reasons why you should get it, what you're going to find out is, is there may have been a lot of reasons why you shouldn't have gotten it that you completely glossed over because of your excitement to get it. I, I run into that all the time. I, I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm immune from any of this. I, I run into scenarios like that all the time when I'm buying you know, equipment, when I'm buying a mower, when I'm buying a mini excavator, a trailer, all these different things. I run into those same scenarios. I get so excited to get this thing. Maybe the wife buy, buys into it and she's like, yeah, go ahead. If you think that's going to be the best for us, go ahead and do it. And then I look at this thing and I'm like I have to have that and I'm only checking the boxes that I want to check and I'm not looking at any of the things that I really should be evaluating well to determine if I should really get it or not and I end up making a purchasing decision that is maybe limiting to some degree I'm like oh man I really can't use this the way I thought I could I really can't fit it where I wanted it to go or we really have to reevaluate where we go now because the place that we would normally go can't accommodate the thing that I wanted I hope that's all making sense. It's really just to give you guys some advice when it comes to shopping for a tow vehicle, when it comes to shopping for an RV, when it comes to trying to pair the two together and really figuring out what is the right vehicle RV combination for you and your family. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.